In today's video, I'd like to give a brief overview of Olympic weightlifting and why it is important when we're doing strength and conditioning. Why it should be one of our choices for exercises when we are performing um, power and speed exercises. So, just very quickly, as an overview, Olympic weightlifting is a sport in which there are two lifts that needs to be, uh, need to be done in order. The first one is the snatch, the second one is the clean and jerk. So the clean and jerk, um, basically you start from the ground, you're lifting the, you're lifting the, the barbell off the ground, and then from there you're lifting up to your um, front of the shoulders, and then, and then you also go into an overhead position. Where the snatch, uh, you have to do it only in one movement. So you start from the ground and you lift the bar up to over your head, but you cannot load, but you're not allowed to stop in, in between. Versus the, the clean and jerk, you first lift the barbell up to your shoulders and then you can jerk it over there and um, get it over your head. So the difference is that the snatch is much faster, uh, but you can't lift as much weight because you have to move it faster. And also in only one in only one motion. Whereas a clean and jerk is a bit slower movement, but you can lift much much heavier weights. Okay, so this is the clean. That's how the athlete should always start. So the barbell is on the ground. From there, this is the first pull. Because the bar is staying on the floor, is not moving. From there, we're pulling up to the knees over here. From there, we perform the double knee bend. And then from here, we start the second pull, which is the extension of the hips, knees, and ankles. So you see how here there is a bend in the hips, knees, and ankles. You see that? Yeah. And then from here, when you start extending the second pull, you already got ex some extension in the hips. You continue to extend your hips, knees, and ankles throughout the whole movement. So eventually here, you'll be have full extension of the hips, knees, and toes. You'll be on your toes. Then from here, you have to rapidly drop underneath the barbell so you can catch it in the uh, squat position, in the front squat. But you need very good levels of flexibility and mobility in the lats, in the chest, and also on the uh, hands and forearms. So this is the clean. Now the second part of the clean is the jerk. So this is the jerk. So once the athlete has uh, cleaned successfully the barbell on the shoulders, um, normally he or she can take a time um, to so prepare mentally for a second lift off. So basically from the jerk you have a very small dip. So here we have a very small dips in the knees, also a bit in the hips. From there again we get a triple extension here, so hip, knee and ankle. And then we do a split jerk or a squat jerk. In this particular instance the picture shows a split jerk. So we split our legs. And then from here we also extend our arms. So once this is done, that lead gets both of her feet underneath her base of support, arms extended over the head, and then the rest can tell whether the um, lift was successful or not. But in overview, this is how clean jerk is done. Now if we go on to the snatch. So as we said, the clean jerk does done in, in two in two motions. You first clean it to the shoulders, then from there you jerk it uh, rapidly over your head. The starch is done only in one in one motion though. Again from here we have the first pull. Good posture, at least looking up. We're doing the first pull of the floor until to the knees. From there we perform the double knee bend, which comes between this face and this face. Then we start the extension as well. So here the athlete has almost full extension. Here he has full extension. So again you see the extension of the hip, knees and ankles. You could probably do with a little bit more of extension of the knees, but who am, I, who am I to say that? Uh, he's lifting much more than me, so if it works for him, that's fine. But typically, a technical model suggests we have to get a bit more, more extension. And then, once the uh, barbell is lifted up in the air uh, as high as possible, the athlete is pulling himself or dropping the knee the barbell with extending the arms and catching in a deep overhead squat. You see, so it is much faster because the athlete needs to drop faster underneath the, the barbell. And also, if the weight is heavier, you can't lift as high. That's why we have lower load, we can move it at a faster speed. So, the other difference between the uh, snatch and clean 
is the is a, is a grip of the hands that you use on the Bible. If you notice um, here on the snatch, because you have to receive it um, in only one motion, the barber over your head, you have to go with a relatively wider grip. Um, so you can just drop underneath and do a discord position. Whereas if you perform, if you compare that with the clean and the jerk, you see, so here the hands are just outside of the knees of the athlete, outside of the shoulders. There she can clean it and just pretty much like shoulder width, you know. And then here on the jerk the same, that he maintains the same grip and then just extends the arm over the head. So this grip is much more closer um, than this one. Because on the uh, overhead squat or on the snatch position, the grip is too wide. Anyway, that's just some details. Okay, the next slide. Um, so, what is important? So, now here we can see the different training methods that we can use to develop hypertrophy, strength, and power. This is adapted from a paper by Tim Sukumel. So, they did a systematic review on um, the applications of different training methods. So, here we can see some of them. Some of the methods they give us a good benefit for hypertrophy, some for power, and some for strength and power. So, typically, if we compare um, different exercises here on this section, that's all, that's what here on the on the bilateral exercises, that'll be more squats and bench press and such kind of stuff. Um, maybe some RDLs as well and hip thrusts. So here is great for hypertrophy, great for strength, and okay for power. Okay, but if you compare this with the weightlifting exercises, here we have hypertrophy, we have strength, and we have power. So the power is even more than the typical uh, squats the, on the deadlifts and the band deadlifts. The main reason why is that on the weightlifting exercises, we're, we're constantly accelerating the barbell and we do not stop. When on the squat on the deadlift, um, around 70% of the, of the range of motion, we are accelerating the barbell and then at the last 30 to 40%, we have to stop the barbell, we have to decelerate which is going to reduce our force output and our power output. Therefore, the weightlifting exercises are a very good uh, method for improving our power throughout the whole range of motion. That may be one of the other reasons why we do that, you know. So we can also gain some good amount of hypertrophy and strength, you know, uh, which is awesome. Uh, compared with the bodyweight exercises, uh, with the plyometrics, we don't really get as much hypertrophy and strength, but we get a lot of power. So it really depends when we when we can use this, you know. But generally, weightlifting exercises are great for power and for strength. And if you don't believe me that uh, um, weightlifting movements are better for for power for power production compared to squats, to the deadlift and bench press, we can see right now here. Uh, this is from a paper papers from Gar Hammer. Obviously he has been cited in all the papers of Michael Stone. That's why I have copied the table. So here we can do we can see a power output of a hundred kg male athlete in different exercises. So here we can see how much power output can be produced in one exercise in relation to, to the other. So here in the bench press it has the lowest. Then squat and the delete they have more or like less the same and then the snatch um, I think this is the full movement, total pull, uh, yeah, and here in the second pull. Second pull is when we start from the knees and then we rapidly extend the whole body, so we get that triple extension. So this is the most important thing we have to look at in the second pull because uh, in the majority of the times we might not be performing the full list, we might be just performing um, just the second pulls, so we might be from a hang position or mid or whatever. And you can see that there is a big difference in the power output that is produced here. So even jerk, it has 5,400 um, watts of power compared to the bench press, which is a lot. So if you compare these values, it's almost five times uh, bigger, you know. So if you are athletes, of your training athletes, 
We have to take advantage of movements that produce a lot of power, which can be translated uh, very well onto the sport. So, this is the main reason why we should be using these kind of exercises in our training program. Obviously, there is a time and place for everything. There will be, for sure, there will be place and time for squats, for deadlifts, for bench press, and so ever. So we can lay the good foundation of strength. But when we want to be more explosive and we get a bit more faster and powerful, we need to focus more on these exercises. Okay, on the snatch, on the second pull. Um, jump shocks, jerks, and whatsoever. So this is just a very uh, basic overview. So of course these are taken, I think most of these um, power outputs are taken from Olympians, from weightlifters and powerlifters, I'm not sure. But even that's the case, here the power output is much much great. From females is similar, here they don't have data for squats and deadlifts and bench press, but you can assume that this is probably going to be lower. And again, here we have a higher output of the second pool on the snatch, on the clean, and on the jerk as well. So, just some food for thought, guys. Um, if you want to develop your power, you should be using these exercises. And power is a very basic term, but you can get a bit more, a bit more specific when you get the context of the sport. But they typically have very great transfer into many sports, like football, basketball, volleyball for jumping, and so on. Uh, for acceleration and also for combo sports, for example, when we're performing our strikes. Because as you already know in the combo sports, when we're performing any stri strikes, we always say that the power comes from hips, right? Yes, so here this is all hips. Second pull, second pull, jerks, that's all hips. It has some involvement over the upper body, but it's not that great, it's mainly lower body that is driving the barbell up in the air. So the um, movement is very similar to the ones we use in sport. There is a great transfer and great benefit to perform these exercises. Especially the jerks, I would say, for combo sports is just amazing. Probably one of the best exercises you can do uh, because you transfer the force of the power from the lower body up to the punch. So if you think about throwing a strike, we load up our hips, then we push off the ground, and then we transfer that onto our punch and we hit the opponent with our punch, with our fists. So the jerk will be a very great uh, exercise for transferring the um, force and power from the lower body up to the upper body.